my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and today's video is going to be my spoiler free review for So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lukens. I will have a link to the content warnings for this book down in the description below along with a link to my spoiler free review and my journal with me for In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens, which we will talk about more in a second but first the book description. So This Is Ever After follows our main character after he completes his prophecy of saving the kingdom from its evil ruler and now he and his companions have no idea what to do with themselves. His friends convince him to take the throne until the hare can take his place until she is found dead and he is stuck there. He now needs a spouse before his 18th birthday or he will fade away into nothing. So I am going to start off this video with a brief backstory regarding my time with In Deeper Waters, which was a book that I read last year. So what better way to celebrate that anniversary than with this book, even if that anniversary is a couple months late. In Deeper Waters was a book that I did have a couple of issues with here and there, but at the end of the day, it's aged super well with me, and I just have such a fond place in my heart for it, especially for the ending. It has these like serious and angsty moments, but whenever I see it, or think about it, the only words that come to my mind are wholesome and smile-inducing. And also cuteness. A lot of cuteness. Which is also going to be a theme for this book here as well. Let's go ahead and start this review off by talking about the characters, and specifically, let's go ahead and start this off by talking about our main character, Eric. I certainly liked and enjoyed him. I found him fun, and my heart and emotions were very much gelling. But I don't know, this is one of my things for this book as a whole, but the character growth for me is not great. Like, I feel like I was being told things about his character growth rather than shown. At the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal as we'll talk about later. There is definitely a lot more about this book for me to focus on, even if I kind of do wish the story focused on it a little bit more. Especially since I do really feel like he had a really great moment towards the end of this book, and I just wish we had built up to that moment differently. As for everyone else, super fun, super charming. I really did have a great time. I thought that they all had this really fun dynamic with each other and I thought that there was this really fantastic banter and comedy and just overall group chemistry. This is something that I always really love and look for when it comes to like books that I pick out for reading and this definitely did not disappoint me. And also on the note of the characters but also just for the story as a whole, I love how queer this book is. Like seriously, it was so lovely. So now let's go ahead and talk about the romances. We get quite a few pairings in here. The one that does stand out to me most is our main couple, but everyone, again, super sweet. My heart did really feel just warm and content while reading this. As for our main couple, they showed me, like, immediately that I desperately need to be reading more best friends slash childhood friends to lovers, and I got super invested in their romance. The whole thing did kind of feel to me like an idiots in love fanfiction tag, and I am so here for that. I also think this author just might be really good at writing angst, because this is the second time my heart has been played with in this manner when it comes to the romance. So F.T. Lukens is two for two on that one. This story is heavily a romantic comedy, and this is a genre that I have, to put it very lightly, struggled to find a book in this genre that I have really loved and enjoyed in the past. And while there definitely have been contemporaries that have gone through the cracks here and there, apparently you add some fantasy into the mix and it works out great for me. There were elements and like storylines in here that I really didn't think that I was going to like when I saw them start to show up, but I ended up having a ton of fun and like I said I got super into the angst and all of the pining and there is so much pining. Story and setting does feel like a fairy tale with some fairy tale tropes that get turned on their heads in comedic ways. And I also loved the ending and I thought it had a really great payoff. And that mostly covers the romantic comedy elements of the story for my thoughts, which again is mostly the whole story but it is not all of it. We also do follow Eric's journey as king in here, and this kind of comes back to the character growth for me. I definitely feel like this storyline took a back seat, which is odd because there were times throughout the story where I thought this and the court politics combined and merged really nicely with the romantic comedy elements. But again, I would have preferred to see a little bit more for both character growth purposes on our main character's part, but also for the world building. Because I also would 
would have really liked to have seen the world develop more here. This is also unfortunately something that I think F.T. Lucans might be two for two on with me, since there were things introduced that just kind of felt like they were there. And I would have liked to see them explored or even explained more, or in some cases at all. I will say I am kind of conflicted about my thoughts here, because while I do have my complaints, the story does also kind of make it work with like the comedic side of things. But ultimately, they were things that did stand out to me, even if I'm not that mad about it. And the other thing that stood out to me while reading was at a certain point the story did feel a tad bit formulaic, and it did go on for a decent chunk of the story. Going into this book, I wanted something fun, adorable, and a good romance, and it delivered on that even though I do think it has its flaws. It's one of those books where the positives are like such high positives for me that I almost want to forget everything else, and overall I do think that I ended up enjoying this more than in Deeper Waters, which I gave like a 4.25 out of 5 stars, but how much more? is the question. A thought that I had while reading this book was that the ending of In Deeper Waters was nearly a five star for me, and a majority of So This Is Ever After did give me those same feelings. So I am going to be giving this book the same rating that I almost gave In Deeper Waters, and that is a 4.75 out of five stars. Also, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I do think this might have done it. Something may have finally broken my reading slump. Because after I talked about my first attempt at reading this book during my September TBR, I ended up taking a few days off from reading. When I came back, I didn't have a single issue. I actually had the opposite issue because I never wanted to put this down even when it was over. This just felt like a story and these just felt like characters that I could have followed for a long, long, long time. Okay, so that's all I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer a question that'll be around here if you want to do that. And hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye!